this year I decided to do something completely different in my fishing and that is target a larger expanse of water. Something that I haven't really done for a long time, usually during the autumn you find me targeting those smaller intimate waters where I can really locate the carp and try and nick a bite or two while sort of following them around the lake. But here, something completely different and I decided to set my sights on a local reservoir. Now I say local, it's actually about an hour's drive and an hour's drive doesn't seem that long but it is a day's only water meaning that I have to get here on the gate arrival and I have to be gone by the time the gate locks at night and during the time of November the gates lock during five at 5 p.m which means ideally I have to be packed away and out of my swim by half four which unfortunately the fish do tend or as I found the fish do tend to start to feed at that sort of time but I knew it was going to be a challenge going into it but I was really looking forward to skitting my teeth into it, hopefully catch some of the carp in the lake. Now the reservoir itself is actually approximately 80 acres in size, so it's a big expanse of water at one end. It's typical to most UK reservoirs at one end. You've got a dam wall where the deeper water can be found and the, at the upper end, in this particular reservoir, there's a nature reserve and that really shallows off up at the top there, going down to, to around five to six foot, whereas at the dam end, you've got waters in excess of 25 foot, if not even deeper. Now it's not only a day ticket only water, but it also works on an advanced booking system. So you actually have to book the peg that you want to be fishing in advance of your trip. Now I believe the booking window opens three or four weeks in advance, so you've got plenty of time to book the trip, but that both has its pros and its cons. Now my first trip was actually back in May of this year and that was through a work trip. I came out with a brand new Infinity X45 rods to film a promotional video and really put them through their paces. I decided to, to book into PEG4 on some recommendations and really give it, give it a go. It, but more than anything, it was just to get a bit of an idea on the lake itself, whether it's somewhere that I really wanted to commit a bit of time to in future sessions. And it was obvious where the fish were. They were well up into the shallow area of the lake. You could see one after the other jumping out and it was quite clear that the, the majority of the fish were up there and I was quite a way off of, of them. And with the advanced booking system, you can't really move, especially when there's other anglers on the lake and occupying those swims. So I was a bit stuck in the, in the area that I was fishing. But needless to say, went on to blank that session but it did, it did spark in the back of my mind a little sort of hunger to get back there. And when I could find some time, I really wanted to give it a good go. And realistically, it's always gonna be hard for me to find a bit of time. I work a full on job and also with a young family, my, my time on the bank is few and far between. But this autumn, I managed to find a few days in the diary where I could get out, okay it with the missus and really put some time into, into this res and getting to know it. Now with the reservoir working on advanced booking system only, I knew the majority of my trips were gonna be based around the weather. Looking at that long range weather forecast and really planning my trips to suit the conditions. And there's one particular area of the lake that I had in mind based on my previous session and also the time of year. You know, the temperature's really starting to drop off when we're going into autumn and into the winter period. So I knew the carp, majority of the carp were gonna be migrating from that nature reserve, that shallow nature reserve, and heading down towards the dam wall. And with a southwesterly wind, that would blow straight into that dam wall as well. So I knew that that would be the area of the lake that I was gonna be targeting. That would be the corner from this area down towards the dam. Now I'm actually fishing today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna have a recast put a few more spawns of bait out and then I'm going to go through the beginning of my mini autumn campaign on the res. Well, my first session ended up being at the start of autumn, around that September period, and I knew it was going to be a bit more of a recce session, trying to find a spot maybe in front of me or try and work out the swim. I ended up booking peg 12. Ideally, I had my eye on peg 11 down towards the, the first one up from the dam, but unfortunately that was already uh, unavailable when I came to book the, the peg, so peg 12 it was. The first hour, I got the marker rod set up with a bare lead and just tried to find an area to fish and really I didn't really find much variation in the bottom it was pretty uniform out there so but from then I knew that the actual feature in the swim was going to be the bait that I put out. Right well it's time to get some bait out all three rods are out on the spot 
that I'm going to be fishing. I'm just going to be putting out whole boilies. I've got a mixture of 18 millers and 15 millers there in the mix because there are a lot of bream present. I want to try and avoid those the best I can. And there you go, as you can see, I've got 18 mil and 15 mil live system in there. I've had them soaking in tap water along with some of the live system booster mix as well, just to give them a bit of extra flavor, give them a bit of a washed out look as well. And hopefully that's gonna be the bait of choice. Like I said, I've got probably more 18 millers in there than I have 15 mil, just on the basis there's a lot of bream. So I wanna avoid that then as much as possible and I'm just going to put out probably I don't know seven or eight spots just to start with just over the spot and then see how the day goes maybe top it up with three or four every hour a couple of hours and see how that goes so I settled on an area of about 100 yards somewhere nice and comfortable to cast even with a crosswind I knew I could get bait out over the top of the rig so I got all three rods set up and out onto that area, put a bit of bait over the top and it wasn't long before I was away with my first bit of action. The middle rod is absolutely melted off. Oh, whatever it is. after that heartbreak of losing that first fish on a new venue there's nothing worse than losing a fish on a snag but when it's your first fish on a new venue that you always want to get off the mark with a with a good start and it it really put a dampener on that session but to take some positive from it i had realized that about 80 yards out just to the left of the swim there are some sunken tree stumps which i went on to later find out and what must have happened is I'm fishing out 100 yards. There was a huge, there must have been a bit of a bow in the line because the wind was going across that day and it sank in amongst that tree stumps. And as soon as I've got down to the rods, put any tension on that fish, it's just cut off. Um, unfortunately, these things happen in carp fishing, but I did learn that to still stay well away from the left hand side of the swim. And it did give me a bit of positivity going into it that I knew the presentation that I'd gone with was working and the bait over the top was gonna to be the way forward and I was in the right area of the lake for my next session. Like I said, I'm just putting a bit of bait out now, just topping up the spots. Because I'm gonna be coming back here in a couple of days and I wanna put a bit of bait out on, a, on, a, on an area to see if we can get the carp visiting that spot prior to that session. But we're into the last couple of hours now. It is still looking good for a bite. The, the rain's sort of starting to ease off. It's sun's made a, an appearance. It's looking good. We've only got about an hour and a half till it gets dark, but once that happens, the gate's gonna be lock, locking shortly afterwards. So we will fish it just before it gets dark and then, and then pack up. But at least I'm starting to learn a little bit about the, the area that I'm fishing. Well, this morning was all about speed, trying to get those three rods out as quickly and as effectively as I possibly could. All three went out perfectly within a couple of casts. They were already wrapped up from the last session, which meant everything was nice and easy, nice and quick to get those rods out. I did top up the spot that I was fishing with three or four spawns of boilies. I've got probably enough bait with me for enough of six or seven spawns throughout the day. I'm confident in going into today, however, the conditions are not what it was forecast. It was meant to be a nice southwesterly wind blowing into the corner, much like the same as last time, but the sun is bright in the sky and there's not even an ounce of wind on the lake at the moment. Hopefully that changes, hopefully the southwesterly does pick up, but conditions aren't looking great. But the rods are out. The bite that I had a couple of days back came around about 11 o'clock in the morning. So 
we're just coming into that time now. Hopefully one of those rods comes up and we have a repeat of the last session, but this time hopefully we can land it and get it on the bank. time I had the bite on the first session had been and gone but the conditions were starting to pick up to more along the lines to what was forecasted and a southwesterly wind started blowing across the lake and it started to turn into real carpy conditions. After speaking to upper anglers around the lake over the last session it became quite obvious that the bite time was actually just as you were about to pack up, just on dark. Now, being already in November on my second session, the gates lock at five o'clock, which realistically meant I had to start packing away at half four to make it back in time for the car park for when the gate closes. And true to form, just as I was thinking about packing up, I had just reeled in the first rod. I was just reeling in that second rod and then out of nowhere, completely out of the blue, my third rod just ripped off. And then all of a sudden the bobbin fell slack and the line just went completely slack. And in that time, I just put down the second rod, went down to the rod, picked it up, started reeling into it. And I thought, just couldn't feel anything. I thought, not again. I've just lost the first fish on that first session. And here I am reeling in another slack line and I've lost this fish. But I must have reeled in a good 30 to 40 yeah, yards yeah. of line. And all of a sudden the rod hooped over and I was attached to a fish on the end. That's a carp as well. This is what we came for. I was just reeling in the last rod, or well, the second to last rod, and this rod's just out of nowhere burst into life. And I wound down, and it felt like it had gone, but it just slack lined me. It uh, it's swimming towards me with some pace, and I've managed to pick up into what feels like a carp. Reed bed. Try and get in that reed bed. I think I've turned it. Yes. She's almost ready for the net. Well, what about that? Just as I was bringing in my middle rod, the second rod I was bringing in to pack away, my last rod out on the spated spot is absolutely melted off and a 25 pound common to boot. What a result. Last knockings, couldn't get any more la last knockings than that. And that baited spot has produced the goods. Get in. Right, let's get a few pictures, slip her back, and I'm going ha home a very happy man. <laughs> well, after getting off the mark with that mid-20 common, you can imagine I was absolutely chomping at the bit to get back to the reservoir. I was proper buzzing with my fishing at the time, and, you know, after, after catching that immaculate common, I just wanted to get back as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, it wasn't until about three weeks later, the end of November, that I managed to get a bit of time to come back. And I, funnily enough, I managed to book peg 11, the swim that I originally wanted to fish. I, you know, it was one of those, I just had a fish in peg 12. Do I go back? I know the area. But you thought, you know what, peg 11 is the go and swim. I've seen on Facebook, that, on the catch reports, that there's fish coming out of there on a regular basis. So while I had the opportunity, I grasped it with both hands and, and ended up in peg 11. Now, to start with, it was, it was apparent that I was fishing in much deeper water, where in peg 12, I was fishing more like eight foot of water, if that. In peg 11, I was actually fishing more like 12 to 14 foot. And, you know, I felt confident from the get go. And I found a sort of area that I wanted to fish. It was about 120 yards out. So I got all three rods out on the spot and I was putting a bit of bait over the top. 
and it wasn't long before I was into a bit of action but unfortunately it wasn't the intended species. That was quite a big bream actually, that's got to be getting on for the six, seven pound mark. Probably the biggest one so far I've had out of it. Still not a carp. Well, three bream so far for my efforts. I was hoping that using the bigger hook baits would sort of deter the bream a bit. I'm using an 18 mil live system bottom bait paired with an eight mil NS1 pop-up. Just a bigger bait, hopefully, to stop getting so many bream bites. And so far, I mean, on other sessions, the bream have been a little bit more prolific of, you know, come up to eight to 10 bream on one session. So, so far it is sort of doing the job as long as it doesn't get out of hand and we start catching more. In terms of the mix that I'm actually putting out, I'm putting out a mixture of 15 mil and 18 mil CC Moore live system boilies. I don't mind the brain, bream coming in and feeding off the spot with those 15 millers, as long as there's those 18 millers there to, for when the carp do come to visit. I don't mind the bream coming because I often think that if the bream are there feeding confidently, then the carp aren't too far behind. The early part of the afternoon was relatively quiet, so I decided to put a few more spawns of bait out over the spot to see if that sort of spurred anything in. It wasn't until three o'clock and then my left hand rod absolutely melted off. Well, I'm having an absolute screamer here. Yes, that's a carp. The patience has certainly paid off and this is trying to kite right. I'm trying to avoid it getting behind that boy that's out probably just under a hundred yards out and to my right but it feels good to be in to a carp especially after four or five bream so far this session it just come out of the blue it absolutely ripped off and it's just off the baited spot i was debating whether to recast it when i put it out there but I haven't had one off of the baited spot so far today. I thought what I'll do is I'll just leave it out there, see if for an hour or so to see if that makes a difference. In it's a good five to ten yards off of where I've actually been putting the bait. So maybe the bream are coming in and taking what's on the baited spot and the carp are just hanging back. Don't feel a bad fish. It's Definitely livened up since it's got closer in. Yes, get in. That's a right result. Well, what about that then? A lovely mid double. I was starting to think that we were going to catch nothing but bream, but deciding to put one of the rods just off of the baited spot by about five to ten yards and it's absolutely ripped off about 30 40 minutes later so that no needless to say that rod's gone straight back out on the exact same sort of area but what a common that is beautiful dark back on it and then a really light orange underbelly it's really starting to get their winter colors now the temperature's really starting to drop off but see it's actually got even a few leeches on its underbelly already so it just goes to show that they are certainly settling down for a winter, but what a fish that is. Let's get her back and hopefully catch a few more reservoir carp. All right, let's slip her back. And away she goes. Come on. Well, having enough of a ripper. It seems like the carp have definitely moved into the area. This one's using its weight, that's for sure. It's just kiting from right to left. It's just strange how all of a sudden, for a couple of hours, I had no bream 
no bream bites. I had quite a few bream earlier on in the day. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, for a couple of hours, there was nothing. And then out of, out of the blue, it's as if the carp had come in and sort of bullied the bream out of the area. I haven't seen it yet. It does feel like a good fish, that's for sure. They're all powerful, seem to be powerful fish so far. Having to bully it a bit, there's a big old weed bed just in front of me. But it doesn't look like it's, it looks like it's only lightly hooked in the bottom lip. Come on, that's a good fish. That is a good fish, come on, yeah. That's it, come under, yes. That is the one we came for. Come on, look at that. That's a 20 pounder. Well, this is turning out to be absolute carnage. Got one in the net that I was just getting the camera set up for. And then my middle rod, which is also on the beta spot, is ripped off. Well, this is absolute carnage. Got one fish just in there. That net there, I've just set up the second net. And it's definitely kicked off. We've only got now about 40 minutes, maybe, hour to 40 minutes till the gate lock so ideally I need to be packing up in half an hour so I think these are going to be the last two fish of the day it's a shame really because you know at this time that there's definitely going to be a few more bites out there especially with what's happening at the moment this fish is trying to kite around this tree in the net come on three bites from carp and three carp landed couldn't ask for a better result than that today well there we go second fish of a double take of a hectic sort of last 15 20 minutes a scraper double really nice clean fish but certainly nothing compared to what i've got waiting in the net from that first bite let's slip her back and get the big one out Well, 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 what about that for a fish then? 23 and a half pounds of reservoir common carp. Absolutely incredible. What a fish, so chunky, got a massive belly on it. Real short to be fair, unlike the other two that we've had today. This one's short and real dumpy, real big belly on it. And this has made the effort worthwhile. Get in, come on, that is a, an amazing looking common. Well, what about that? 23 and a half pounds of hard fighting common carp. Absolutely stunning. Well, needless to say, it was an absolute rush getting back to the gate after that double take right at the death. I've made it back to the gate with only a couple of minutes to spare. It was a bit of a hectic pack away, I can tell you that. But I felt like I finally cracked it. I was absolutely buzzing with that session. I felt like the plan had come together. I found what was working, the bait, the rigs, the tactics, everything had just come together really nicely in that session. And that brings us on to today's session. We're in peg 12 and we're in early December now, which means the gate closed even earlier at half four. The temperature's really starting to drop off now. We're co going more into winter than we are autumn. And it, it just got that feeling that the lake's starting to shut down. The catch reports are drying up and I feel it's about time that I move on to pastures new. Got about an hour left now until it's time to pack up and make that long barrow journey back to the car park. And for sure, it's not gonna be my last session on the reservoir and you never know what the future has in store. Next year, I might be back to do another mini campaign. <laughs>